and the heart of the northeastern part of India lies Karbi Anglong. Between 25.30 degrees to 26.41 degree north and 92.72 degrees to 93.52 degree east, waiting for discovery beyond the national consciousness. The hills, vales and plains are equally distributed here. So are the flora and fauna, which abound the green wilderness of this largest district in the state of Assam. The Kabis, hailed as one of the earliest human groups that entered the northeast and who made Assam their home, are rich in their folklore, myths and legends. The unrecorded past of the Kabis are lying in the rural backwoods in the forms of ruins and relics, which are waiting for documentation and decipherment before they disappear into total oblivion. This documentary is based on interviews with traditional heads and the local tribesmen living in the vicinity of those relics. Thong Nogbe Thong was a legendary Karbi Nogbe or warrior of the Tehran clan. His name still evokes great respect for his exploits in the bygone days. Many relics of the era of the great warrior hero Thong Nogbe can be found in West Karbi Anglong. This is Okkecham Alongjong, which means Valley of the Fresh Fish. A marketplace during the days of Thong Nogbe. The stone sea which one can see today is said to have been the very same sea on which Thong Nogbe used to sit upon discussing various issues with his friends and other villagers. Another marketplace during the time of Thong Nok Bay. The place is still well preserved by the local people situated at Nongjirong near Khanduli. About 30 meters from this market, a stone sea measuring approximately 6 feet can be seen. It is believed to be the well seat of Thong Nong Bay at Nong Jirong, about 15 kilometers from Khanduli. This relic of a stone sea is situated at Umchera. 
Now only the back wrist of the sea is visible as it is partially buried by earth during construction of the metal road. This is also said to be a relic of a seat of Thongnok Bay measuring about 18 feet in height where he rested while travelling from Ji Sarpo near Koka to Jantapur. This is Langtu Thepi, which literally means big well, a pond dug out for Chomkhan, the Kabe ritual for the dead, where it was partially performed. This particular Langtuk or pond was dug out by Thong Nok Bay with the help of just his nook or sword for the Chomkhan of his brother-in-law Har Ronghang. These rocks are the relics of Thong Nok Bay's Long Thu, which means traditional tripod, over which he cooked his meals. While the smaller Long Thu is that of his sister Ring Thamas where she is said to have prepared rice beer for the Chomkan of her husband, Har Ronghan. This rock with well-placed horns is known as Thong Apung Ut or Thong's trumpet. When danger is imminent, it is said that Thong would go to this particular rock and blow into these holes, warning the villagers of threats. The stone with the top chopped off is an evidence of the might of Thong Nok Bay. It is said that there was another non Karbi Nok Bay at Khelani. Thong Nok Bay went to confront him, and legend has it that by way of testing his strength, he chopped off the tip of the stone and with one stroke, which foretold his victory over the Khelani Nok Bay. This rock is known as Arlong Chordak, which literally means hacked rock. It is said that Thong Nok Bay struck the rock into two halves with one stroke of his sword, as it was a barrier on his pathway. Say to be the ring worn by Thong Nok Bay on his little left finger. Thong Nok Bay, as described in folk songs and tales, was mighty, strong and gigantic to fit the huge ring. It is still in possession of a Teron family in Rongkhan. This monolith was erected by Thong Nok Bay after his victory over his Khilani opponent. The area since then is named after this monolith, that is Long AP, which literally means Big Stone.
Haimu. Haimu was a beautiful Gabi damsel. Just as Tansin's Rag Malhar brings rain, the Haimu alone or the song of Haimu chanted during the Bhotor Kikur, which literally means Ode to Weather Deities, ritual by Katharpo or the royal priest, brings forth the rain for cultivation. Though Haimu was betrothed to her childhood sweetheart, Long Teron, even bearing him a baby son, she was forced by her stepfather to marry to Long Dili of the Terang clan. Relics pertaining to her temporal life are found in plenty in West Kaviyangna. The hill-like imprints in these rocks are said to have been made by Haimu and her little sister while playing on these rocks. These foot imprints is said to have been that of Haimus. This particular jackfruit tree has been named Hong Jangri or the orphan jackfruit. It is said to have been planted by Hai Imu in days of old. It has been so named as it is the only jackfruit tree in the nearby vicinity. After her forced marriage to Long Delhi, Haimu was taken to Suchang. This was the pathway to Suchang. It was on these rocks that the marriage party rested on their way to Socheng. These marks on this rock are said to have been made by Hai Imu with her sickle. These marks were made by her in anger and in anguish at having been forced to leave her beloved 
लॉन्ग टेरोन दिस डिप्रेशन ऑन द रॉक इज से टू हैव बीन मेड बाय द अनबोर और बंडल ऑफ राइस दैट दे पार्टुक वाइल दे वे रेस्टिंग This particular rock has reddish markings said to have been splashed on by Haimu who spat out the bitter nut juice while she was having one It may be noted that only this particular stone has this marking The locals say that even if the splashes are scraped off with a knife the markings get etched on again Phulong Nongpli This location is Phulong Nongpli It is said that the Karbis assembled for the first time here for discussion and from then moved to their present locality that is Phongkhang Chinthong Amri Sochandhanta Nilip and Lumbajong that is the present divisions of Karbianglong Sucheng This is Sucheng the capital city of early Karbi traditional head or king the Pinpo These relics are the stone seats where the nogbe or warrior used to assemble and hold meetings. Originally there were 30 such seats or mounds but now only a few of them remain. This is the location where the members of the killing division among the Karbis performed a ritual to propitiate the killing Arna or the killing god. Only after the ritual performance here can the killings perform the religious ritual at Ronghang Rongbong or Rong Ara. This is the picture of Tongsko or Langjan which means small water source the only water source of the early Sochang settlement due to predominance of shifting cultivation in the nearby areas the water source is now drying up This picture looks like that of a snake 
that has turned into a stone. It has been said that there were two such snakes at Suching. While one remained at Suching, the other went to Ronghampur and was killed by a Nogbe named Ra Rongphar. Both the snakes later turned into stone and these snakes look alike in stone is believed to be lying here this way since. This is Rong Arak, which literally means core village. The early Socheng was shifted to the present Rong Arak, wherein the Garbi traditional head or king, that is, the Ronghang Rongbong, dwells. These are the renovated houses constructed through MP scheme at Rong Arak. These cemented snakes are the replica of the two snakes, one in Socheng and the other which went off to Ronghampur. The Kabis had their traditional cooperative known as the Jir Song or Jir Kedam Asong. It is said that this very pillar was one of the first pillars erected for construction of the house where the members of the Jir Song or Jir Kedam Asong dwelled in Rongkhang. Now it is being preserved by the Karbi Anglong Autonomous Council. The river Karbi Langpi is the second largest but the most important river in the district of Karbi Anglong. Originating from the state of Meghalaya, it gently flows through West Karbi Anglong, catching up with the river Kopili in the district of Nogao. Many relics are to be found in the vicinity of this great river immortalized in legends and myths of the Garbis. To mention a few, Muring Murong. This is Muring Murong, believed by the Garbis to be the village or abode of the gods. It is located at the bank of Karbi Langpi near Amtering. This is the Bong Archok Arlong or the stone support of bottle gourd plant located at Moreen Murong.
a very important plant for carbies as the dried up and hollowed fruit is necessary for storing rice beer during various social cultural rituals. This particular rock is believed to be the archok or support for the first ever bottle gourd plant. Arnam Pharo Alongpak This is Arnam Pharo Alongpak or the stone slab of the hundred gods located at the confluence of Karbi Langpi and Lang Kangtang Um Ut River. It is said that all the hundred gods assembled here for consultations among them before any activity. These imprints are believed to be the footprints of those gods. This very hole was the place where they usually put their swords and other weapons. Chelling Athebai This is the Chelling Athebai or the Gorge of Chelling. The Karbis believe that one can foretell his or her fortune by throwing three sticks of bamboos from the Chelling Athebai across the Van Alum, the peak of Van, which lies across the Karbi Langpi at a distance of about a kilometer. When the sticks are thrown, each representing wealth, intelligence and poverty, one's luck is foretold depending on which stick hit the one alone. This spot is on the eastern side of the Chelling Athepai. The western side is believed to be the abode of a huge ferocious eagle or worm. This eagle used to eat up the villagers. One Nogbe called Sir Tobi was able to ultimately kill the eagle and as a tribute to this legendary hero and his feet, Sir Tobi came to be known as Sir Wong. The big hole in which the eagle lived still can be seen. Sir Tobi's feet is still kept alive in folk tales, songs and legends among the Karbis. B. Chikri This is a lake commissioned by B. Timon and the term Chikri comes from the word Chakri which means servants that means a lake dug by B. servants. Locals say that one's fortune can be tasted by sighting a fish in the lake which is considered a good omen. However, if one sees a snake or a monitor at B. Chikri this will bring bad luck. The amazing thing about this lake is that the lake remains full during winter but dries up in the rainy season. The lake is revered by the Karbis. Tok Ahem 
these are the ruins of the house of Bersing Krom or Tok. He was killed by Bhinsu. The locals call him Tok Hee or Tok the Demon. Probably Tok might have been a tyrant. What is interesting about the ruins are the materials used, the carvings on the ruins and remnants. Why is this the only ruins of its kind in the vicinity? Who really was piercing Krom or Tok? All these questions may be answered if a detailed research work is undertaken by scholars to throw light on the history of the locality. Rong Menam. This is Rong Menam. This village is said to have been built by Harlongi and Harbamon, both Karbi men. Rong Menam was the place where the Kurkepon or clan conversion ritual was first performed. Tirkim. This is Tirkim. This location originally was a lake which has now dried up. This lake was commissioned by the king of Tirkim. This location was the bathing place of king's daughter. The depression on this rock was probably where the princess pounded the seeds of Humbi which literally means knicker bean. As the Karbis use this as we now use soap for our ablation. This stone sit was said to be the throne of the king of Tirkim. Lang Pampi. This is Lang Pampi. It is said that this is where the Karbi drum beats originated. As the meandering water hurtled down the rocks, strewn surface of this hilly stream reverberates melodies. Karbi drew inspirations from these melodies of nature. This is how Karbi traditional drum beats originated. In all their intricate sounds grew from this spot. Methan Longe. This tall monolith is Methan Longe or dog monolith at Langsodo near Donka. Oral tradition tells us that the dog was actually a man who took the form of a dog. 
He lived in an all-woman village or Arloso Aram and was the husband of all of them. He was said to have been killed by one Carvinogbe named Jabra and the monolith was erected as customary in the spot where the funeral ceremony for the dog was performed. So was the Mithan Longe erected. The other small monoliths are said to be those of his wives and children who laid their lives to save the dog. Korhon Jangreso This is Korhon Jangreso's stone. It is said that a father unable to bear the ill treatment of his son and daughter at the hands of the cruel stepmother brought them both and left them on this high rock. The children unable to alight from the rock saw two young bamboo shoots growing near the rock. They invoked the gods asking for the bamboo shoots to grow up to the rock overnight if they were destined to live. Like a miracle that came to pass and the two children were able to descend sliding down the bamboos. Henceforth, there has always been two bamboos growing at the foot of this particular rock.